Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Rainmaker Podcast. I'm your host, Earl Hall. Look, you know, we bring you some very key people in the life insurance industry to really help you out. And today is no different. I've got my buddy, Kyle Studer. Hey, Kyle, how you doing, my friend? Thanks for being here with me today, man. Man, I'm doing awesome, Earl. Thanks for having me, man. I, I appreciate the opportunity to be on with you today. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, I've been following you for a while. We were chopping it up before we uh, the show started, and we were just talking about going all the way back to 2020, kind of when we first met, and um, just all the amazing things that you were doing at the time, and you're still doing some amazing and great things. Well, I mean, I, obviously, I've checked you out on YouTube. You've got an amazing YouTube channel. What kind of was the, you know, beginning of that? Why did you, like, start to use YouTube as a platform for what it is that you do? Yeah, it's a great question, man. I So I, um, I had went independent. I had left my former uh, MLM-based insurance model, and I was just selling insurance uh, as an independent agent, and I never... I didn't know if I'd ever recruit again. You know, I was kind of jaded by the process the first time around. And I remember watching a, uh, a Gary V video, which I don't watch a ton of him, but I watched this video. I listened to it when I was going to appointments and he was talking about uh, quantity over quality and just getting content out. Yeah. And, um, you know, he mentioned, YouTube videos, short clips, content, cartoons, all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah. Gary and, V I've been following for a minute. I watch him every now and then too, but absolutely right. He's talking about just putting out a ton of content. <laughs> yes, sir. And so that kind of gave me, that kind of made me relax about it. I think a lot of people kind of stress out. They needed to be perfect or something. Mm -hmm. And when this guy who's like killing it says quantity over quality, I was like, huh, interesting. So and then I got a, I've got a shout out, uh, Dave Duford. Oh yeah. I remember, and I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this. I remember reaching out to him and saying, Hey, um, you know, when I, cause I, when I recruited the first time around, man, I did paid ads. I spent a lot of money. In wow. recruiting. It cost me a lot more than it actually made me. I said, Hey, you know, how many of your agents have come from like YouTube or, uh, paid ads? Yeah. And he said, Oh man, probably 95% YouTube. And that was uh, enlightening to me. And I, and I was like, wow. So that was really the first I saw Dave doing it and I knew he was building an agency. And so I reached out to him uh, about how he did it. And that just kind of affirmed that YouTube could really work and that it's a long game. You know, you have to have patience and persistence, but definitely. Yeah, de YouTube is definitely a long game. Um, it's one of the things that I talk about with agents now, you know, even just individual agents, look, get some content out there about the type of life insurance you sell. Talk about the problems, talk about the solutions, talk about the different aspects that they can help you potentially create wealth, how it helps you in life, not just in death. And, you know, it's one of those things where I don't, th agents have not caught on. I think people like yourself that are building an agency have, have caught on to the potential there. But what are your thoughts about actual individual agents like creating their own content as well? Oh, it's a great idea, man. Um, you know, my, my, my focus has really shifted toward the agency development and bringing in agents and developing more training. But if I were just an independent agent, I would no doubt about it. If I wanted to sell a lot of life insurance, I would be going live on Facebook. Um, I would be doing a lot of live content, just talking about um, the process. You know, for example, like, hey, here's what happens when you buy a house. You're going to get bombarded by direct mail. It's going to talk about mortgage protection. It's going to talk about paying off the mortgage in the event of a death or disability or return a premium if you don't die. Mm -hmm. And I would just educate people, regular people, you know, a lot of people send those in, they think it's from the bank and yeah, they do. Just, just putting stuff out, man, educating people and, and reaching. I mean, you would develop a good, you could develop a very good lead source and, 
it's no different than what I've done with agents creating content that helps life insurance agents. You create it that helps the consumer, the, the potential client mm -hmm. and people will reach out to you, but you have to have faith that it'll work. And I, I think yeah. it will, if you stay consistent. Yeah. Cause like you said at the outset, I mean, it's, it is a long game, but you know, it's funny. Um, the, the patience level normally is not there, especially for a new, a newer agent um, or maybe even an agent that's been in for one or two years. It's like, you know, I, I got to make the quick buck. I got to get out there and, and I got to do this. So they're stuck. Well, if you want to call it that, you know, depending on things like Facebook or buying leads or, or whatever else it is. But one thing that I have seen is that if you start today, right, say today you say, I am going to start a YouTube channel about life insurance or not, right? Uh, one or the other, you say one or the other. Those two years are going to go by anyway. It's going to yeah. go by. And then you'll be sitting here two years after the fact saying, well, maybe I'll start my YouTube channel now, you know, or whatever. And so all that time is gone and wasted because time is going to pass by anyway. I mean, I even know, noticed with yourself, I mean, like some of your latest videos, like you're just in the car, right? You're chilling. You know, <laughs> you're just out there as a matter of fact, you know, hey, this is what this is what's on my mind today and, and what I want to talk about. So you've gotten extremely comfortable on camera. So take me back to the first day on camera compared oh. to now. <laughs> yeah, it you know, it, normal, you know, mm -hmm. what, kind of what you would expect. The first video I ever did, I talked about my personal mantra in the field of selling called let's like I'm here to serve not to sell. And yeah, that's kinda, on your website too. That's the main thing on your website. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's, it talks about that internal battle we all deal with. Like you're trying to focus on production and selling and closing, but how do you bond with people and connect with elderly people while thinking about those things? If you think too much about the numbers and the production, you start to think of the people like a number yeah. or like production. And so then you can't connect and you're not closing. Um, that was the first video I ever did. And I remember I had like notes laid out. My background was different. If you go watch it, we had like my daughter's like uh, day bed in the background. And uh, I was nervous, man. <clears throat> you know, my energy was different. I was like trying, I was really trying not to mess up. I think yeah. I shot the video like four or five times. Oh, you wow. know, it's only a three minute video. Wow. Yeah. And now I'm just like, you know, yeah, you definitely, you definitely get comfortable. And I kind of, I would, I did have talked about this the other day. Like, you know, if you doing content will help, you know, if you can articulate and communicate, it's one of the most deadly skills you can develop <laughs> uh, in life and doing it on video will help you. Um, but if you can go into like a Toastmasters meeting or mm. any kind of local thing where you could talk in front of 10 people and you have to stand up, I promise you, your life will get better. Yeah. You know, it, it's just a skill that's powerful and a lot of people are afraid to do it. That's why it's a powerful skill. Yeah. It's, you know, one of the things that, that you've talked about a lot, um, on your channel, um, is the whole MLM thing, right? Um, you even used that term a few minutes ago. Um, with an agency that you were with, you have what I consider to be more than a passion and it's not from a bad place it, from everything that I've watched from you. It's not from a bad place at all or trying to down talk people. It's like, look, I want every agent to look out so that they don't go through what I went through. Talk to us about that for a minute and why it is that you are so passionate about that whole what you've termed as the, the MLM in the life insurance industry. Yeah. So guys, if you think about the top three most popular IMOs that you can think of, mm -hmm. the, odd, the odds are you're, you're thinking at least one or two of them. Uh, those top three that you see a lot, they all came from where I came from the same IMO. Now I can't mention names because They'll, oh, yeah. They'll send out a cease and desist order. They'll send threatening letters, all that type of stuff. I mean, wait a minute. Let me, let me pause right there for a minute because a lot of us have kind of went through that. Right. And it's so funny how these bigger than Titans in the industry, bigger than 
the Greek gods, right, <laughs> um, are afraid of any pushback that someone like you or I, it, compared to them, may be insignificant, that they would see us as a threat. That is just ridiculous to me, that they can't stand a little bit of pushback. Yeah, you know, I don't know if it's um, a th- I don't know if they view it as a threat or if they view it as an opportunity to make money. Hmm. Um, because I know one of the big dogs, you know, the CEO of the company I came from, you know, I don't know. I think he probably got into the business with good intentions, honestly. And it's a dirty, it's a dark world. There's a lot of people who will, you know, they're very manipulative. And mm-hmm. maybe he had to grow into that. Maybe he, and I think he's probably off the rails now when it comes to the dollar bill and greed. Um, but I don't know, you know, only God can judge yeah. all of us, I suppose. But my big thing with the MLM is I, I spent four and a half years there. I bought the dream. I sold a lot of insurance. I won a lot of trips. I was trying to build a team. Very hard to get traction. Um, very hard to keep agents. Think about like if you're not op- – I can't hire a bad of the bone secretary and pay her $4 a m- an hour. Yeah. You know, eventually she's going to realize, oh, you know, I mean you can't do that because everybody knows what minimum wage is. But in our industry, people don't know what is a competitive commission rate. So you got – you got people offering 25 or 30%. We're offer, we're offering 100% mm-hmm. to new agents. Some people are offering 70. And guys, it's the same carriers. It's the same products. The training, all, a lot of it stems from where I came from, mm-hmm. kind of the mothership of the MLM insurance world. Um, so, which by the way, a lot of those roots stem from Amway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, they do. They do. So you, you're very familiar with what they're about. Yeah. My big thing, man, was to, and I'll keep it short, four and a half years into it, I went to a meeting. The guy had the second biggest organization in the company. I just got back from a trip where we went around Europe and they said, Kyle, get up there and inspire the crowd. Tell them how awesome it was, you know, inspire them to win so they can win next year's trip. I get up mm-hmm. there. I do that. Then the big dog stands up and talks and, I don't know what's up, what was up with him, but you can go listen to it. It's all transcribed. I had it recorded on my phone, so I share it on my channel. But he said, do you know who we make all of our money off of? Ignorant people. We make a ton of money off of ignorant mm. salespeople. And so I boiled this down. It's like, okay, so if I stay in this model, this MLM model, here's my options. I can either work hard and be an ignorant salesperson working for less than I deserve or less than I can get. Or if I play chess, Mm -hmm. as they say, I can take advantage of these ignorant people and I can bring them in like cattle and I got a big spread. Wow. And we just, you know, we override them as long as we can. We get them motivated. We sell them the dream. And so guys, the whole model from my experience, it is based off of deception Mm -hmm. and it's like, is that what you want? You, you kind of got to sell out. You got to sell a piece of yourself to swallow that pill and to, and to build that long term. And by the way, you're not building it. It's not yours. You signed a contract that it it's the CEOs. It's not yours. So if you ever leave or you ever have a change of heart, you've got nothing to take with you except the intellect. Yeah. So, I just don't see it as a win. I just, and, and to add to it, man, there's people who get promoted as the, like they're winning, but they're really not. They're in debt. They don't own their home. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things. I mean, I see people, you know, life insurance agents, they're making 30, 40, 50 K a month, but they're broke because of, you know, they're pushing them to buy an inordinate amount of leads or, you know, travel across the country to go sell. And so they're spending money on plane tickets and, and hotels and food and they're broke. But all that we ever see is, hey, they made 50K this month. Let's talk about how you made the 50K. Well, exactly. what about the money they lost? And oh, did I mention chargebacks? Um, <laughs> that's a whole 
other things. So I know all of this, Kyle, has inspired you to create what you've created over the past few years at kylestuder.com. Tell us about the day or the week or the month that you said, this is what I'm doing. I'm starting my own thing. Yeah, so, you know, it first started with being an independent agent and realizing that based on my previous production, I legitimately doubled my commissions on every policy I wrote. Mm. Like I was making, I was selling 15 to 20,000 a month and getting paid 62% on whole life business. Mm. And, and that I, you work up to that. Mm-hmm. That's like four or five promotions. So when I left, it started just as an agent. And I think honestly, it was about uh, the start of COVID I think was March. Well, it's about March, 2020 mm-hmm. when Ohio issued a stay home order. That's when I started my channel. That's when I, um, decided, okay, you know, I'm going to start putting out content and then it just starts from there. And to be honest, Earl, you know, like the vision grows over time and the excitement grows over time. Yeah. And now more things have like come to me and my perspective is broadened. And it's, you know, something else about, I don't want to ramble too long on that, but one of the biggest things that I, one of the biggest rewards that's come from going independent that I didn't expect Mm. was when I was with the previous company, it really is like there's an invisible ceiling. Like you are, you are fit into this box. Wow. And so like your creativity is suppressed. I would have never thought about creating content for agents or writing a book or, you know, creating apparel or branding myself, or I wouldn't have thought of any of that stuff. It was always attached to this Titan company, Yeah, you know? And so I, as I've been removed, my creativity has come back and my vision's kind of broadened. And so I would just say that it, you know, it kind of started with, okay, you know, I'll hire a few agents, you know, I'll, I'll help a few people learn how to do this and I'll probably stay in the field forever. So that's how it started. And then, um, it's just grown with time, you know, it's like, wow, yeah. this can be bigger, you know, I can do more. And so it just kind of, it snowballs, you know, it, it grows and it's an amazing industry guys. And I think, Earl, you said something earlier that I liked. Uh, forget exactly how you said it, but when you said it, <clears throat> it reminded me of the power of like staying in one lane mm. for many years. You know, like I've been doing this for now eight years, and then at some point I'll be doing it for twenty years. Yeah, and that snowball gets bigger and bigger. Your knowledge Absolutely. and your understanding, and there's a lot of power in picking a lane and staying in it. So don't be trying to jump around agents. Don't try to jump from one lane to another. Some people say like, man, I'm looking for, I'm just looking for the best opportunity. And sometimes when they say the best, what they're saying is the easiest. Yes. You're so right when you say that. Um, And what I was talking about earlier, just with, you know, people want instant gratification. And I think it's sold. This industry is sold as in the next 30 days you can, you know, quit your job or, or whatever, which obviously isn't true. If anyone that's in the industry, well, everyone that's in the industry knows, well, first you got to get contracted. That could take one week to three months, um, depending on what's going on, you know, but you said something so key to me about staying in your lane and not switching lanes and how that snowball effect builds. And it's how we build credibility for one over time, this guy or this woman has been consistent over the last 10, 15, 20 years. They obviously have something to say. They obviously have something on the ball. And I mean, it's not going to be too long. It's going to be a full decade, right? That you've been in this, in this thing. And you're a relatively young guy. How old are you, by the way? 32. 32. Yeah. And it's, it's like, I wish that at 32, 
I had your intellect to do some of the things that I'm doing now at 50, but um, <laughs> it's like, hey, you get it when you get it, right? But what yeah. are some of the, I mean, at your website, kylestuder.com, I know that you are there to help agents, you know, to bring them on to your team, to show them how to start and build their own teams and just how to work this business. What are some of the ways in which you are like reaching the people in your organization? It's like, do you do zoom calls? Do you do phone calls? Like how does the coaching happen? Yeah. Yeah. So like, well, I have, you know, a YouTube channel that goes out, there's a video a day and that's Mm -hmm. for pretty much everybody. Once an agent comes on board, we add them to a private Facebook group where we've got some like like more exclusive tools. Like we teach an in-home presentation, Mm -hmm. which you start to get access to a lot of those types of tools. And you go through some agent basic training videos. Some of them were created just for the group. Some of them I've just hand plucked from the YouTube channel. So that's something you have access to 24 seven. We do a live zoom training every Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern to about noon Eastern. And we're always talking about fundamentals. This Mm -hmm. week we talked about a new agent who uh, wrote his first two policies. He went in his first house and wrote $1,600 in premium. So we kind of prop him up, congratulate him, give him a chance to speak, give him an opportunity to grow as a person, but also kind of say, hey, he didn't position him at the table right. That could have been bad. Hey, he didn't evaluate the policies they had in place. So he walked out with $1,600 in premium. He might've been able to walk out with 2,800 in premium. Mm -hmm. We don't know what they're paying. And so we went through all the mistakes he made. So it's all virtual um, via zoom. And then the big thing, Earl, is I always tell agents, like I'm looking for the agents that say, Hey Kyle, I got a question or they call me, you know, you bring in 10 or 15 or 20 people. And it's unfortunate how I'm, I'm hoping that more do. I'm looking for the ones who show initiative. Yeah. And so I'm accessible. You can just call me. You know, you could text me. You can take yeah. some of my time. So it's a little glimpse. Awesome. Man, well, I want to make sure that everyone checks out KyleStuder.com. Go is that the best place for them to kind of like mm-hmm. find everything about you is there? Yeah, so KyleStuder.com is a pretty simplistic page. It tells you a little bit about my philosophy, uh, mm-hmm. mentions you know a few brief topics, and then if you scroll to the bottom, there's a contact card where you and I can talk via email, and I can send you a Calendly link where we can schedule a talk, and also on YouTube. And if, you, if you're an agent, <clears throat> I'm also on Facebook. That's a good place to connect with me. Yeah. Um, but if you do that, please send me a message. Let me know you're a life insurance agent. Yeah. You're very responsive to messages. That's how we like booked this whole thing was I just sent you a Facebook messenger message, you know? So yeah. And you responded. So yeah, that's awesome. Well, Kyle, I want to thank you so much for being here with me today, man. This has been awesome and amazing. I appreciate your time. And at some point in the future, I'm sure we're going to have you back on again soon. So thanks so once, once again for being here with me, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Earl. I appreciate it. I look forward to it. All right. And I thank you, the listening audience. Thank you so much, or the viewing audience, rather. Thank you so much for being here with us. We bring you these Rainmaker podcasts every Thursday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make make sure you subscribe to the channel. And hey, I'll see you on the next show. 